What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Ratch Report. It's time to talk about the Toronto Raptors because they may have revealed their plans for the NBA trade deadline. We know they made that deal regarding OJ and Nobi, and it was being reported by Adrian Wojnarowski. Shout out to Rap City on Instagram for reporting this that the Raptors are now officially building around Scotty Barnes. Again, being reported by Adrian Wojnarowski. He also went on to state a few other things as well, which we'll be discussing in today's video. And I will give you my take on whether this is the best decision moving forward for the Toronto Raptors. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to hit the subscribe button as well, that'd be very much appreciated. So with that being said, Let's get into today's video. Now, as you guys know, I do like to give out shout outs on my channel and the shout out for today's video goes out to Daniel. So Daniel, thank you so much for supporting this channel through your likes and comments. It is very much appreciated. Now, let's take a look at the things that were being stated by Adrian Borchanowski. And shout out to Evan Sider Sidier on Twitter for um, pretty much just posting this up there. But Pascal Siakam trade update via Adrian Wojnarowski. Raptors now building team around Scotty Barnes. That fits him age-wise compared to Siakam. Now, I think this is a no-brainer. And I don't necessarily think it should be an age thing. I think it should be more of a talent base. Obviously, you don't want to acquire someone that's a 30-year-old talented player, you know, just given the age that it's not really going to fit the timeline of uh, Scotty Barnes. But also just because you want younger players if you are trading for Scotty, excuse me, if you are trading Pascal Siakam, you want players that are closer to his age. He also says Siakam has value around the league, but he holds a leverage on a potential destination because of his expiring contract. And this is something we've constantly heard, right? We've heard Pascal Siakam pretty much state that he's not going to be signing with any other team besides the Toronto Raptors. And we know the Atlanta Hawks were a team that were very close to acquiring, acquiring him during the offseason. But they ultimately decided to back up because they weren't sure if he was going to sign with them as well. So taking a look at some of the other points, I mean, interested team want, interested teams excuse me, wanted to know if Siakam would re-sign with them, which will impact how much the Raptors received in a trade. Pretty much what just I had stated. And Toronto is now... Using this window of time to see what Siakam looks like around Barnes, Emmanuel quickly, and RJ Bird. And I think this was one of the factors I forgot to mention in a few videos ago by the Raptors. The Raptors did something very intelligent by trading OJ and Inobi sooner rather than later. I know there's a lot of, you know, analysis out there saying maybe they should have waited till the NBA trade deadline to see some of the other offers as well. But essentially what this allows the Raptors to do, aside from the fact that they got a really nice package in return, is to see how this team looks. You know, obviously there's all sorts of rumors about what Pascal Siakam's future will be, but this gives you some time to evaluate. I know a lot, not a lot of Raptors fans like to hear that word because they've been hearing that word for about a year from a Sayu jury, but sometimes the best moves are the ones that you don't make. I think the Raptors replace one starter with two in RJ Baird and Emmanuel quickly, and sometimes those are some of the moves that ultimately shape their roster a little bit better. I think Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam can coexist. It's just more so surrounding them with talent, and also they've got a point guard now that can just... He's electric. You know, Emmanuel quickly is going to be great for the Raptors. But I do want to take a look at the Raptors salary cap situation and discuss Pascal Siakam trade further because it is a lot more challenging than a lot of fans may realize. Now, taking a look at the Raptors salary cap situation here, I know everyone is focused on Pascal Siakam, but the challenging part about trading Pascal Siakam is his big contract. He's making $37.8 million, and this isn't a situation similar to OG and Anobi, who was making about $18 million, which was a little bit easier to trade. And I've always stated that it's a little bit if the Raptors are going to trade one or the other, I think it's best to keep at least one of them on the roster. Obviously, we know the Raptors moved on from Ojin and Nobi, but I think the challenging part about trading Pascal Siakam, aside from his salary, is how you're going to be able to complete this trade with all of the salary fillers you'll be getting in return. And let's use the Dallas Mavericks as an example because they have been linked to the Toronto Raptors, and they have been one of the teams rumored to be interested in Pascal Siakam. Now, taking a look at the Dallas Mavericks salary cap situation here, two players that were mentioned were Tim Hardaway Jr., Rashawn Holmes, and Josh Green. Now, if you were to look at teams, excuse me, players like Tim Hardaway Jr. and Rashawn Holmes, assuming, again, big assuming that the Raptors would accept this, they obviously wouldn't. But the challenging part about this is you're acquiring guys that are on money, that have a lot of money, going forward even into the next season in fact this is probably some of the better players in terms of long-term money attached to contracts and players if the raptors do acquire players you will have to acquire players that are making a decent amount of money 
And look, some of them may be locked for longer than how Tim Hardaway and Rashawn Holmes are locked in for, right? Because when you do trade, you're going to have to trade for a guy making $15, $20 million and then some of the smaller contracts to fill that salary void to match salaries when you are trading for them. So again, I want to quickly take a look at the Raptors roster here because when we talk about salaries, you're if you're not acquiring your Tim Hardaways and your Rashawn Holmes, you obviously want some young players in there as well. But that becomes a challenge in itself. Not only from the money point of view, but you take a look at the Raptors roster. Currently, they have one spot open. So you would have to do a two-for-one deal. But if the Raptors are to acquire a young player in a trade, you have to kind of make the roster work a little bit better. I know people are going to suggest you can waive a few players. I think ideally you would probably want to include someone like a Jalen McDaniels. But even then, when we talk about the Raptors wanting, let's say, younger players over um, picks, it becomes more challenging, right? Because some of the younger guys in the NBA, they're making about less than $10 million or close to that. So you do have to have one or two players that are making, you know, 10, 15, 17, $18 million. And that becomes difficult because of the Raptors salary cap situation. Now, I know people are quick to suggest that the Raptors should move on from Pascal Siakam because he's an expiring contract and also because of the money he's making. But I think the Raptors should really focus their attention on some of the other guys that are making a bunch of money, but not really contributing a bunch. Gary Trent Jr., Thaddeus Young, Otto Porter Jr., and of course, Chris Boucher as well. Those four players are making a combined $38 million. So while people I understand may be concerned about how much money you're going to owe Pascal Siakam on a new contract, I think the ideal situation to would be to keep your core of Pascal, Scotty, Emmanuel Quickly, RJ Barrett, and then kind of see what pieces you can move around. Of course, guys like Chris Boucher don't really have much value around the NBA, so it may be difficult to move off of him for now. And considering Gary probably likely wants $18 to $20 million, if not more, moving forward on his new contract as well. And for the production he's giving, I just don't think it's worth it. So again, I want to emphasize on some of the other guys making so much money as well. While I may understand people's concern about the Pascal Siakam's new contract. I just think there's a certain skill sets he provides. And it's been quite obvious, even though the record may not show it with the Raptors' um, wins and losses, the Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes can coexist. They just need the right role players around them. So again, it, it becomes very challenging when we do talk about Pascal Siakam trade rumors and trades for specific reasons. And money being the biggest, right? That's why a lot of fans, a lot of, you know, uh, mock trades even suggested it might be easier to trade OJ and Nobi rather than Pascal Siakam, just given how the roster is made up. Like even if you do a four for two deal, the Raptors would still have to find a way to move certain guys, right? I know people are going to be quick to suggest someone like a Thaddeus Young. I think he's making too much money to waive. And then you got guys like Garrett Temple who was brought in to be a veteran. So I don't know if that's a great decision. Again, I'm not saying I wouldn't waive Garrett Temple to create roster spot. It just becomes very complicated when you talk about wanting more young players than picks, but then you still need to include salary fillers as well. So again, that's what I think regarding Pascal Siakam. As great as Scotty Barnes is, I think it's a huge risk trading Pascal Siakam, who's a great bucket getter for all of the talks about how much money he will be made. I think there's definitely different options you should look at. Even Jakob Perto making, you know, $19, $20 million. That is someone maybe you look for to trade in the future, you know? So again, that's my opinion. I do want to address one little thing before we end this video off here, guys. And I just wanted to bring this up. I know despite all of the rumors, despite what the Raptors may say, and this isn't a shot at Adrian Wojnarowski or Mike Ascato or anyone out there, but this was being reported a few days before OG and Inobi was ultimate tr ultimately traded. And this was stating that rival executives believe Raptors will do whatever it takes to keep OG and Inobi long-term in Toronto. If Toronto does decide to re retool, it seems likely it would revolve around trading Pascal Siakam. So that's all I've got to say, you know, with respect to Adrian Wojnarowski as well. Just literally a few days before OG was traded, someone asked him on threads about, you know, the Raptors and OG and Anobi and Pascal. And he said those decisions just aren't there yet. So again, the Raptors are a team that don't necessarily leak all of their information out there. And it caught a lot of people, including myself, by surprise when we saw that he was traded to New York because we hadn't heard any, any rumor linked to that even the week prior to. So again, I just want to see this regarding Pascal Siakam. Sure, he may be getting paid a lot of money, but I think the trade is a lot more complicated than a lot of people may realize, right? So again, those are my thoughts on Pascal Siakam and these trade rumors. Obviously, if you are getting the right pieces, it's never a bad thing to 
make the right trade, but I just don't think the Raptors will get it for Pascal Siakam as well. So again, I'm waiting to hear your thoughts. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think about this. And as always, I do have a trivia question for you today. And that trivia question for today is, which country was Raptors head coach Darko Ryakovic born in? Was it A, Ukraine? Was it B, Russia? Was it C, Croatia? Or was it D, Serbia? So whoever answers this trivia question correctly first, in the comment section gets a shout out in my next video so again i want to thank you guys for your support if you're still watching this video make sure to hit the subscribe button as well that'd be very much appreciated so thank you once again and i hope you guys have yourselves a great day